Good evening, everyone. Our readings for this evening are Psalm 25, verses 3 through 9, from the book of Numbers, chapter 24, verses 2 through 7, and then 15 through 17a, and from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 23 through 27. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as the family of God <clears throat> in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. So let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Come bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you who by night stand in the house of our God. Lift up your hands toward the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for ever. Amen. So, in a few moments of silence, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 25, starting at verse 3. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness' sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for ever. Amen. And our Old Testament reading from Numbers chapter 24. Now Balaam looked up and saw the Israel camping tribe by tribe. When then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he uttered his oracle, saying, The oracle of Balaam, son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eye is clear, the oracle of one who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down, but with eyes uncovered. How fair are your tents, O Jacob, your encampments, O Israel, like palm groves that stretch away, a stretch far away like gardens beside a river, 
like aloes that the Lord has planted, like cedar trees beside the waters. Water shall flow from his buckets, and his seed shall have abundant water. His king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. And his fourth oracle. So he uttered this oracle, saying, The oracle of Balaam, son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eye is clear, the or oracle of the one who hears the words of God and who and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down with his eyes uncovered. I see him now, but not now. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Here ends the first lesson. And we say the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked <coughs> with favour on his humble servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our forefathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And the second reading is from Matthew chapter 21, starting at verse 23. And when he entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what, what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say, from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? And if we say, of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for they regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Here ends the Second lesson. We read Canticle number one. May you be blessed, Lord God of our Father Israel, from creation and forever. Yours is the greatness, Lord, and the power and the glory, and the splendor and the majesty, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the sovereignty, Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. From you come riches and honour, and you rule over all things. In your hand lie strength and power, and yours it is to give greatness and strength to all. And now, our God, we give you thanks and praise the splendour of your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. <coughs> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. This evening, I'm going to ask the question, 
do we reinterpret scripture to follow the world? The reading from the Old Testament spoke of Balaam. Balaam was a diviner. He was apparently not an Israelite. And he was hired by Balak, king of the nation where the Israelites were camped, to put a curse on the Israelites. But instead, he blessed them. Initially, he had refused to go and curse the Israelites. But after the second delegation from Balak, Balak had come to persuade him and offering him even more money, God gave him the go-ahead to go with them. But God was angry with Balaam and blocked his path. Balaam's donkey could see God's angel, but Balaam could not, so did not understand why his donkey would not do as he wanted. But eventually, Balaam did see the angel and got the message. He did give God's message to Balak, which did not endear him at all, as we heard. In the New Testament reading, we hear of Jesus refusing to be drawn to answer the chief priests and elders when they questioned his authority, in the manner that is almost the hallmark of Jesus' way of teaching, he responded to their question with a question of his own. But Jesus' question was very cleverly worded. To answer it, the chief priests and elders would need to commit themselves to one or other definite decision. This would demand a certain course of action from them which they were not prepared to commit to themselves. Jude, in his letter, speaks of rejecting God's authority when people's creed has been corrupted. Pawson, in his book Unlocking the Bible, explains that this can happen in one or both of two ways, as follows. The first is a sentimental view of God, where we may see God as a nice guy who says, Let's forgive and forget. All I want is for you to be happy. Or the syncretistic view of Jesus. This view no longer recognises Jesus' unique position as the only Son of God, the creator of the world, but equates him with all the other gods and prophets that are worshipped in all other world religions, and so effectively reduces his, or his position. Once this has happened, then the doors are thrown wide open for all sorts of aberrant behaviour. An example he gives is that of Israel in the wilderness. <clears throat> God led them out of Egypt, but only two of them, Joshua and Caleb, got into the promised land. The others rebelled and did not stay the course. The example that Jude gives of corrupted character is that of Balaam. As we read this evening, Balaam had a gift that God was able to use, but the love of money had so taken hold of Balaam that God had to speak through his donkey. Balaam was greedy. As Pawson explains, once a person's creed is corrupted, character then conduct, then moral degeneration, will all follow one another. Paul Siaki, in his recently published book, Church Interrupted or Church Reset, asks the question, will the post-COVID church differ from the pre-COVID church or not? The real question that we need to consider is, has the focus of the modern church drifted from that of apostolic times? And if so, what will it take to bring the church back to those characteristics? Yorki quotes another author as saying that Christianity is very conservative. It has not changed. In fact, we read in the scriptures that God is the same yesterday, today and in the future. He is unchanging. We tend to want to modernise the teaching to bring it closer to the way we want to live. 
we soften the ways of God to make them more amenable to us. But God has not changed and he is not going to change. He will forgive the sinner, but not the sin. The consequences of sin will stay with us. But we also need to remember that once a sin has been forgiven, we should not repeat it and then ask for forgiveness again. So the question again is, are we in fact writing our own scriptures or are we staying the course set by God? Are we doing what God wants? Jesus was unbending in his condemnation of the religious structures of his day. Have we created religious structures that distract us from God's word? Let's say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in his Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. And we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Eternal God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works proceed, give your servants that peace which the world cannot give that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that, free from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Enlighten our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy defend us in all the perils and dangers of the night, for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. collect for the day. God of hope and joy, you sent John the Baptist to announce the coming of your Son. Inspire all who serve in your church and prepare for his coming again by turning us from disobedience to your loving service. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. God of our ancestors, and Lord of mercy, you've made all things by your word. By your wisdom you formed us to have dominion over the creatures you've made, to rule the world in holiness and righteousness, and to pronounce judgment in uprightness of soul. Give us wisdom, give us the wisdom that sits by your throne. Do not reject us from among your servants, for we are your servants with little understanding of judgment and laws. Even one who is perfect among us will be regarded as nothing without the wisdom that comes from you. With you is wisdom, 
She knows your works and was present when you made the world. She understands what is pleasing in your sight and what is right according to your commands. Send her forth from the holy heavens, from the throne of your glory send her, that she may labour at our side, and that we may learn what is pleasing to you. For she knows and understands all things. She will guide us wisely in our actions. Give us the grace to accept your gift of wisdom. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. God of all power, we acclaim you. Lord of all grace, we worship you. We are not worthy of you, yet your goodness makes us praise you and give you thanks. We praise you for the life you have given us and for all the blessings we have received at your hands. Above all, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the grace and hope which his death and resurrection have brought to us. We ask this of you, our Father, that we may never forget your goodness to us and that we may show our thankfulness not only in words but in the service of our lives, both now and in all eternity. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on, your weak, on our weakness and those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Grant us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. And we pray, preserve us, Lord, while waking, guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen. Now may the Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. And the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. <laughs>